Father Caron, there are 1,372 people gathered in this room right now. I've spoken to each of them, and we all have a problem. And we got together and we decided that we would like to make it your problem. Welcome to the problem. <laughs> all of us have come together in this room because something has moved us. So the, exper the experience that we all share sitting in these chairs is that we're looking for something. We're looking for something more. And what we want to know is what does the Christian faith have to offer our life today, right now, that is truly relevant? Because we, we don't want life to be a ritual. We all want to meet Jesus Christ. We've met Jesus Christ, but we want to know him more closely, more intimately. We, we want his life to be our life. And the sadness that we feel in our life is because that's not the case. It can make us feel like failures sometimes. Even more, we want our life to change. We want to be like Zacchaeus in the gospel. And we wonder, and something moves us, tells us that, um, that the greatness that we see of the people in the gospels is possible for us. Or I guess that's our question. Is it possible for us to actually live the greatness of the people in the Gospels before we get to heaven. We know heaven's going to be great, but do we have to wait until then for this greatness to happen? So that's our problem. So we're hoping you will help us, and maybe we could start by, by framing the problem with this question. What exactly is the role of the Christian event in life? I thank you, Father Cameron, for this question because uh, yesterday morning I was struck by a question similar to this one raised by a university student in a meeting. The question was, my desire is not to miss out on anything, like the beautiful things. I think that this way of expressing the longing we are looking for, the longing we have, every one of us, is a beautiful expression of this. Because we decide not to miss on every beautiful thing that happens along the way of our life. Who of us wouldn't agree with this student? Everyone's desire is not to miss out on any beautiful thing that happens in their life. In front of a question like this one, each one of us has to decide, to decide whether to take it seriously or to forget it. This is the first decision that every one of us has every morning, every moment of life, to take seriously this urgency, this human longing for something. And uh, if one person takes seriously this question, all of a sudden, life becomes full of intensity, of curiosity, full of this urgency of finding 
an adequate answer to this kind of question. This seems nothing. But if we don't have this longing for something, everything is in life becomes flat, without interest, because we don't wait for nothing. So, we wake up in the morning without waiting for nothing. Because we have decided that there is nothing interest, interesting in our life or in the, the things that can happen along the day. So, what could be the interest to awake every morning? If we take seriously a question like that, work, waking each morning, go to the work, or go to work or to study, to meet people or to read a book, is a possibility of look for an answer to this question. How not to miss out on the beautiful things that happen. Because that generates a curiosity in us, an attention to every hint that reality can offer us to respond to this question. We start to live everything with this longing for not to missing out on any beautiful thing. This inner desire becomes the criterion of judgment because it contains, because it's the possibility of comparison or make a comparison between what we are deciding and what we can find in every human experience. All of a sudden, relationships become not a burden to bear, but a gift, a possibility of finding something in others' experience that can be useful to answer to my question. Everything is full of a promise, or could, could be full of a promise that each one of us has to discover in everything. But when we are really careful and attentive to every experience of people who we meet, not every experience has the capacity of answering this desire. Because many people don't know how not to miss out on the beautiful things that happen in life. Not every experience has the same interest, the same value. Not everything is the same. And the question is to wake every morning, to live every instant with this curiosity. This is to live life as a human being who coincides with his own nature, with his own desire, with his own longing for something that makes life really worthwhile of being lived. At the end, if we observe what happens to John and Andrew mm -hmm. at the beginning of the gospel, was something like that. There are two people 
who woke this mor that morning longing for something. And they had heard about somebody called John the Baptist. And they were curious. And when to meet here. And in that moment, happened something in their life that changes their life forever. I was struck by a preaching of the Pope that he did recently in one of the feast of Christmas time. Because I think this can answer to this question that we are talking about. It was the, the feast of the Epiphany. And the Pope said, this feast, let us see a double movement in one direction, the movement of God towards the world, towards humanity. And in the other, the movement of men towards God. Let us think of religions, of the quest of truth, the journey of the nation toward peace, interior peace, justice, freedom, because all of these are our desires in the in a part of our heart. It's like this movement of each one of us has been answered for another movement of God towards us to meet this movement of our heart and answer this longing for happiness, for justice, for freedom. And this double movement, said the Pope, is driven by a mutual attraction. What is it that draws God? It is love for us. We are his children. He loves, us, he loves us and wants to free us from evil, from sickness, from death, for burden, because without interest, life is really boring, to bring us to his home, to his kingdom. And um, from us, too, there arises a love, a design. The good always draws us. Truth draws us. Life, happiness, beauty attracts us. Jesus is the meeting point of this mutual attraction. This is the meaning of this Christian event. Jesus is the meeting point of this mutual attraction, of this double movement of God and of us. He is God and man, Jesus. God and man. But who took the initiative? God always. God's love always comes before our own. He, seeing this longing for him, for happiness, that we are not capable of answering by our effort, by our, by our projects, by our attempts, God has had pity on us and has moved towards us. 
to find this longing for fulfillment that every one of us has in his own heart. He always takes the initiative. He waits for us. He invites us. The initiative is always his. This is something that Pope Francis emphasizes every time he speaks to us. This initiative of Christ towards us, this first movement, this love that is at the beginning, the starting point of this movement to find our loneliness, our boredom, our incapacity of not to missing out on the beautiful thing that we, that happened in our life. And this is the interest of Christian event for life. Is an experience that we can see in somebody, the first of all in the humanity of Jesus, in a man who encountered John and Andrew the first time, and after was another and another, and this event has arrived to us through somebody in which we can see a possibility of living life in such a way that we can't miss out on every beautiful thing that happens in life. The desire that every one of us is to meet some, somebody like him. Somebody in which we can recognize now, now, now his presence that can save everything we want to save, everything we, we want to keep with us forever. All the beautiful relationships that happens in our life, all the beautiful things that we want to keep with us forever, but that we are un incapable of keeping it because it's impossible for us to maintain in all his freshness, in all his beauty, everything that happens in our life. And we need the help of somebody greater than we have in which this event, this desire can be really fulfilled. So the student that you were speaking to is very much like, or I should say the Magi are very much like the student. Yes. So, because they had this longing, they had this urgency, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they were driven by it, they woke up in the morning, mm -hmm. going to their jobs, really looking for something more, and then one day they looked into the sky and they saw this beautiful star, mm -hmm. which is a kind of an event, mm -hmm. and they decided to pack their bags, to kiss their wife goodbye, mm -hmm. to you know, um, gas up the camels and head, mm -hmm. head east, mm -hmm. or west, I guess, they were east. So this longing, this urgency that you're talking about, this is not just for Christians then. No. It's for every human being. It's for every human being because each one of us can look at our at himself or herself. Yes. And discover if this longing is his or her. Yes. Because who don't decide, who doesn't decide to have in life the possibility of keeping the most important things that happen in our life? Yeah. For instance, if somebody loves another one, who don't, doesn't decide not 
to keep this love alive forever. That these beautiful things can be always alive, not only something that happened in a moment and after a while fade away. Yes. Disappears as a present experience and only remain some remembrance of this. Instead of some present event that involves all our life, is only a remembrance. For these people, for this experience of many of us, uh, springs out this desire of not missing out on these beautiful things, because we are not capable of maintaining alive the most important thing that we are in our life. We can start working with a desire uh, of fulfillment. Yes. We are really lucky when somebody offers us a, a job. Mm -hmm. We start to this job with uh, all our energy, or our curiosity, or our desire of uh, makes of making a real contribution to the company or to but after a while uh, the difficulties or our incapacity of living in another way make working something boring yes. or uh, difficult to bear. Yes. What is happening that the starting point was this curiosity, this desire of going to the work, to, to work, this possibility of fulfillment, and after a while everything changes. And the promise couldn't be fulfilled. This is the origin of this movement that brings us little by little to a skepticism. Mm -hmm. We don't yes. believe that could be a real answer to this kind of questions. And that's part of our problem. That's part of our, part yeah. of our problem. We, we feel like happiness is an illusion that we've been deceived into thinking that there is this fulfillment. But as you say, the event that we're looking for is not something of our making. It's not of our initiative. It begins in a love. And it has to be great enough to take up all of that urgent longing, all of that desire, etc. But why, Father Curran, is it so important to speak about Christianity as an event? What, what's the significance of that word? I think it's important to, to look at this question because we many times uh, speak of Christianity not as an event but as a, a, some kind of doctrine or ethics or things to do or feelings that after a while uh, doesn't resist the, the challenges of life. What, does, what is important that we can talk of an event? What is the importance of an event? The best way to understand this kind of thing is to look to our own experience, because in our experience we can find the delight to understand this kind of question. The first thing is to look for some for a significant event in our own life, to observe what happens when an insignificant event 
happens in our life. The most common event in which we can see the relevance of an event in our own life is falling in love, for instance. Let's look at these facts together. If we are attentive to this fact, we can acknowledge some signs, details, repercussions in our own lives. Mm. And the first of this is that this event introduces a new way of dealing with the ordinary things. When somebody is in love, he doesn't change job or mm -hmm. the difficulties of life, of the challenges that he has to face in the daily life. Everything remains as before, but something new is happening in the way of dealing with this kind of challenges that he has to face in the daily life. A relationship, job, circumstances, or challenges we have to deal with. This newness is so evident in somebody who is in love that people around us realize what this, of this newness. Up to the point that Many times, uh, somebody asks us, are you in love? Mm. They don't know anything about what was happening in us. But there is, it's like if they identify this kind of newness with an event that happened in our life. That means that this is an event, the possibility of introducing something really new in the way we can live the ordinary life. For this, it's important to recognize what is important on an event in, in, in life. We can recognize if an event has become the criterion of our living by its influence on our way of living. An event introduces a newness that no other strategy or effort or attempt was able to introduce before. This is, not, this is not a decision that we make to do the ordinary things in a new way. It was a surprise. We, was, we were surprised of this newness that in the way we can deal with the things, the ordinary things that we need to face. Sometimes I become aware of this newness through others. Because they made me aware of what is really happening. And this is the reason because many times we are expecting some event in our life. We are expecting for something that can really introduce this newness because no other attempt is able to do it. So this is the only possibility that we can figure out that really can change our daily life in a life full of meaning, full of intensity, full of warmth, of tenderness, 
full of we of all we need to live life as a human being according to our desires. So this is what Pope Benedict XVI means then in Deus Caritas Est when he says being Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea but the encounter with an event, a person, which leads to a new horizon and a decisive direction. And that's what you would call this newness. This is, I think, a summary of what we are talking about. Because Benedict, Pope Benedict identified in a precisely way what is the point. It's not a fix, it's not an effort made by us, it's not an, an strategy, it's not some kind of uh, idea that came through our minds, it's an event. Because yeah. we don't know how to deal with this important challenge that we have to deal with in, a, in the daily life. We, we are unable to answer to this kind of question by yeah. ourselves. Yeah. And for this reason, we are looking for some event. And only this is the first step, but only, but at this, as, a, as a second point, experience convince us that only when this event happens is the possibility, is the verification that this is an event the only possibility of a real newness in our life. A Christian event is a, an example, the most important example of this method that, Paul, that Pope Benedict uh, spoke. And we want to talk about the newness, but just, just before we move on to that question, just just to clarify then, because I think sometimes the notion of event can become a little abstract for people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we think of an event as, I don't know, some very special occurrence like mm -hmm. a 50th birthday party or something like that. But what you're saying is an event is a person. So as you said, just meeting somebody can make this newness happen. And I think that has been the experience of many of us, if not all of us, here at the New York Encounter. I mean, we come here not simply to look for ideas, because there's a lot of places to get ideas, but we come here precisely because we, we want to meet persons. We want to be face to face with persons. We want to be in, in the presence of persons with the hope that somehow that, that newness will take hold of us. And I know it has for me in you know, the few hours that I've been here. Otherwise, what is the meaning of being here yes. today? No? So then what exactly, Father Coron, what, what newness does um, this bring to life, this event? And in and, and answering the question, if you could help us see it in maybe some particular gospel examples so that we make it very concrete. Well, I, I am very happy to, to read with you uh, a piece of one Yusanis test in which he comments a scene of the gospel in which he identified in a gospel known by any of us what is the repercussion of this event in the life of the person who met Christ. Jesus is there, speaking at the door of a house. And all the people block the passageway to hear him talk. At noon, he had to eat. But as the gospel say, he even forgot to eat. It was as if in front of people who were suffering, he couldn't go away. Yeah. And two fellows arrived with a stretcher carrying a paralyte, so he was smaller than others his age, contracted and stiff 
and they say, let us buy, coming through. Excuse us. The way ambulance is used to variable siren when traffic is blocked, but nobody lets them pass until police arrive. Let us buy. But the people still not, do not move. And all the people remain in their places, listening to Jesus. So then, those two fellows, clever guys, go behind the house. Since the houses were only one story and normally had a roof made of mud straw, they hold him up to the roof, break a bit of the roofing material, and lower him behind Christ. Christ turned, fixed his gaze on him, and said, Take heart. Your sins are forgiven. With great acumen, with his acumen, Jesus sensed the depression and moral weakness that normally accompany long illness. The man had been paralyzed for 20 years. And this is an observation that is quite true psychologically. Afterwards, he heals him. As a challenge to Pharisees who were there in front, scandalized because he has said, take heart, your sins are forgiven. But imagine that fellow getting up from his bed. Imagine that paralytic who finds himself free, standing, who is there among people like everyone else. Everyone looks at him with curiosity, a bit frightened because of the strange supernatural fact, strange at least, that happened in their midst. Then that man will follow him will understand many things that he said. In any case, the main thing was comprehensible to everyone. He said he was the Messiah. What happened after was to this? That his relationship with God, the way he would pray that evening. The way he would go to the temple next time. The sentiment, in, the, the sentiment of life that he had when he saw the sunset or rise. Mm -hmm. When then he went to work every morning with his soul full of gratitude for the forgiveness. And with his soul overflowing with mysterious fear, fear and trembling towards this mystery of God who reached all the way to him in that man who had healed him. In short, the sentiment toward Jesus the way he said Jesus, the way he went together with the other to the village to announce the kingdom of God, to become friend, the way he thought about his past life, the way he had treated his family members, the way he treated them now, were 
all actions that started from a consciousness of himself, from a sense of his person, from a physiognomy that was shaped over by this event. It is impossible that something like this happen in the life of a person mm. and can't, cannot shape the way of dealing with the reality. Not because I had decided to look at the sunset in another way. Because I can't look at the sunset without having in, our, in my eyes what was happening yesterday. This is an event that builds my own eye. I am the same than yesterday, but different. And when somebody meets somebody like him, it's impossible not to recognize that something was happening, was happened to them. What's happening to you? What has happened to you? Mm. And this is the possibility of touching now, like before, Christ as an event, not as a preaching, not as a doctrine, not as an ethics, but teaching in a human being in the way of dealing with the whole thing, with the ordinary thing, with the sunset, or, the, or waking in the morning, or going to to job, or uh, meeting people. Everything is determined by this event. No other things, no other theory, doctrine, ethic can change life like this, like an event like this. And all this newness is not the result of a decision. It's that I, I am determined, I am shaped by this event that changed my life. This is Christianity, not something that I learn and afterwards I need to live or to apply. It's the newness that the encounter of Christ introduces in our life. This is another thing. Christianity is another thing. It's others that what we are in mind. It's something like this. The question is that we can touch this in somebody today. Because it's this, the moment in which we recognize what is the importance of this event that is brought to me through a human being, with all the limits, with all the difficulties, with all the, even the sins, but with a newness, with a capacity of fascination, of a capacity of attraction that no other had before in the life. And so we decide to share with him the possibility of living life in such a way because it's better. It's better for us to live life with this intensity, with this warm, with this warmness, in, with this in, in capacity of loving everything, with the capacity of coinciding with myself in everything I have to do. Mm. Not, as always, we are waiting for finishing the thing to start life, to live, right. to live but only as a possibility of living this newness in every moment of our life.
So this is amazing, because if you're, if, if you're talking about the paralytic in the gospel, the newness is not simply the fact that now he can move and stand up and walk, but it's all these other things. It's the freedom, it's the way that he looks at his past, it's the wonder he has before beauty, he, it's, it's the sort of uh, tenderness that he has towards everything he has to do even when he goes to work, it's the way he thinks about his past life and, and his sins, and it's the way he regards others. And probably there will be many examples of this from the gospel. I think of the the parable of the prodigal son, because again, it was, he, he was moved out of this terrible place he was in because of the event of a person, a father. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes back to his father. And what many people don't know about the prodigal son is that when he got home, he married the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is, <clears throat> that, that's one of the marks of the newness. But Father Caron, this is very interesting, but this is all, these are all people in the past. This event can't happen today to us, can it? This is a, a good question because it, the, the, the question that my student, when I was teacher in a high school, uh, put before me every moment, this, the gospel is a beautiful thing. There's an unbelievable thing, beautiful, but this thing don't happen now. This is the challenge of an historical event that is not enough that this event can happen in the past. It is possible for us to share, to participate in, a, in, in an event like this. It's possible in the present, this is and the real challenge that Christianity has to show in front of the humanity today, that this is not only a preaching or a ethics or a feelings, but something that has happened in, in the present. And We can see in witnesses of this event that this can happen and keep happening in the present. I want now to, to tell us a, an episode of Yusani's life that our friend Saborana, who has written a, a biography of Giussani, in which he tells us when, in the present time, he identified this moment in which life for him changes in such a way that from this moment on, nothing for him was real, really trivial. It was a moment in which uh, a teacher of him introduces the uh, explanation of the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John. Yusani uh, was from the Italian poet Leopardi because in his poems he recognized something of this longing for happiness that he felt in, in, in his heart. So he devoted when he, he was 15 years old, uh, part of, of his time to learn by heart all the poems of this uh, poet Leopardi, in which he expresses in a beautiful way 
What is the drama of this longing for happiness that every one of us uh, has? That, and it's, as, it, it's the, the type of things that always strikes me reading Yusani, because that somebody when he's 15 years old cannot find another companion for living, mm. that a poet, you know, uh, besides atheist in which he recognizes his longing for happiness is amazing. Yeah. And this is a testimony of what was the, the humanity of Yusani. Because it's crucial to understand what is the repercussion that this moment in which a teacher of him introduces the gospel of St. John was for him, because main, uh, the, the class was full of people in this moment, the, seminar, the, the seminary were full of people, and the classes were very, very numerous. So there were many made of Yusani that heard the same gospel, mm -hmm. but not for all of them had the same repercussion. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Because only if we are longing for something, we can intercept the answer. And for this, Yusani calls this day a beautiful day. Everything happened for me like the surprise of a beautiful day. When my 10th grade teacher, I was 15, read and then explained the first page of the Gospel of St. John. At that time, it was mandatory to read that piece at the end of every Mass. Well, yeah. Do you remember? Because you are a little old. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for I reminding myself, me. Now, when I was a, a little... You get discounts at Dunkin' Donuts, yeah. though. Hey, Therefore, <laughs> I had heard this gospel thousands of times, and nothing happened. But this day, the beautiful day, came when my teacher, my professor Corti, a man, explained the word of God. That is, the word in which everything consists was made flesh. Many of us has heard this word many times, many times without that anything happened. But for him was the moment in which everything changed. That's me. What is the repercussion of in King in Yusani of this phrase, the word was made flesh? That the beauty was made flesh, the goodness was made flesh, love, light, truth was made flesh. Being does not exist in a platonical, super celestial world. It was made flesh and is one among us. In that moment, Yusani remembered Leopardi's poem to his lady. In that moment, I thought, all Leopardi's begging as a crying out for something. 1,080 hundred years later of that event. Mm -hmm. And that had already happened 
and St. John has announced the word was made flesh. But what is the repercussion of this event in Yusani's life? It's only a sentimental one that after this moment, yeah. nothing happens. Going back to this incident 60 years later, Yusani said, I was a young seminarian, an obedient, exemplary boy, and nothing happened. But one day, something really happened that radically changed my life. This moment that he was talking about. My life was literally invested by it as a persistent memory that assailed my thought as an incentive to reevaluate daily banality. From that moment on, the instant was no longer trivial for me. Yeah. The instant the importance of the instant, every instant, was significant for him. For that moment on, the instant was no longer trivial for me. Everything that was. So, everything that was beautiful, true, alluring, fascinating, or even only had the possibility of being so, found in that message his reason for being. And that reason for being was certain because it was a presence. One that gave hope that everything could be embraced. In that moment, he found answer to the question of my friend on the university. Yusani has found who can keep every beautiful thing that happened in life. Everything that was beautiful was made possible to keep forever. Mm. This is the result of an historical event like this that introduces a newness that even after 60 years he remembers like the crucial moment mm -hmm. like we were talking about the gospel of John when John met Jesus and write the gospel after 60 years, he remembered the moment, mm. the place, the hour in which that event happened. This is and a, a significant event who introduced this change that Pope Benedict speaks of. This is what we are looking for. An event that is not the result of an effort that we can recognize that we are not able to do it and to sustain one after another on the day of our life. But it's something that shape our life in such a way that from this moment on, the Eastern was not trivial. Everything was full of, de and in of density, of intensity, of warmness. Everything was full of meaning. This is the promise 
that Christianity as an event has inside of this event. Is it possible for this event to be something very stable in our life? Yes, it's possible if we recognize that it's something that is given. That is not possible for us to create with our energy, with our forces. And what is the only possibility of keeping with us this newness, only to receive it continuously. If there is some place in the world in which this event keep happening, in only in the contemporaneity with this event, only this newness is such a gift that only if we are in touch with the origin of this event in the history, we can, this event can become more and more stable in our life because we are always taking part in this event. The question is to identify what is the origin. It's in this, this origin is not an idea or an ethics or an effort because this origin is a place, a living reality in which this keeps happening. The, new, the newness we need to look for in this, new, in this place that is a Christian community really alive because it's in this way in which we can participate in this newness. And this is what Christ promised to us. I will be with you until the end of the world. Where he is with us until the end of the world. Where? In a place, in a living reality that this is the life of the church, in which we can be awake and awake, reawaken in our life. And in this being reawakened, we can participate in a stable way in this newness, because we are receiving constantly this newness if we are as a beggar uh, going every day asking for what we can't produce and only we have to receive and we need to be so aware of this nothingness that we are that only returning to this place in which we can receive it, we can share, we can participate in this newness. And as a final question, Father Coron, can you, in a few words, tell us what would this new life look like? If we accept to allow Christ to enter in our heart, he will become our companion in the adventure of life. His presence will determine the sentiment of ourselves as a beloved person, will determine our perception of life. We are not Christian, are not visionary people. We are not 
seeing things that are not there. Right. We meet people changed by this event, not visionary people. As a person who falls in love is not a visionary. He is in touch with somebody, a real one. He is not simply alone in the relationship with reality. This companionship of Christ allows us to watch reality in a more complete and entire way. I will want to, to put an example. As a boy is able to look at reality better when he is in the company of his parents. Once, came come to my mind this example to make understandable what we were talking about to my students in, when I was teacher in high school. If a boy is visiting Disneyland with his family, uh -huh. he is happy, glad, because everything strikes him. Everything is a surprise. He's curious. He is enjoying every attraction that he uh, see with his eyes. He enjoys every attraction on the part. But if in a moment of distraction he got lost in the middle of the park, all the attraction remained there. Everything is beautiful as before. But everything would be perceived by this boy in a different way. Yeah. What early had been regarded positively, all of a sudden became strange because he was alone, full of fear. Having got lost, Everything became all of a sudden a menace. Something who introduced fear in him. At the moment he finds his family again, everything changes perspective, yeah. outlook. Each attraction recovers its beauty. Beauty prevails over menace. And the boy start to enjoy it everything again. Recovering his adequate relationship with reality allows him to have the true perception of reality. Living life in the company of Christ produces the same effect in our relationship with everything. Living life in his company each thing becomes meaningful again. Time acquires sense, intensity. It's not empty anymore, but full of density. Nothing is banal, trivial. The Eastern is full of possibilities. Life becomes an adventure to enjoy together. Discovering life is something desirable not something to prevent it. What prevails is fascination, not boredom, even when the circumstances are challenging. Everything contains a promise. Wasting it would be a pity. Nothing is useless. Each thing is worthwhile. All this makes us free, even from the outcome. Reward is the action itself, as loving is the reward of love. 
We don't need to wait for something outside of love. We don't need confirmation outside, outside of the experience itself. Everything is inside of this experience. We become free in a moment. This makes us free from the circumstances which surround us. Even inside some adverse circumstances, we are not dependent on them. That is our dream. Not depending of every circumstance. In the deepest part of ourselves, we are not determined by them. We are not a piece of the mechanism of the circumstances. We are human beings. We are Lord, not slave, of these circumstances. Christ companionship generates a capacity for affection for ourselves, which is beyond imagination. No other company is able to awake such an affection for us. Mm. Tenderness towards ourselves finally becomes reality. No blame can prevail. No mistake or failure is able to overcome its power. His presence prevails above everything. His presence allows us finally to reconcile with our inner desires. Often people get angry with their own needs of fulfillment. They are too big for human energy. No effort or strategy reach to answer them. Their claims are beyond human possibility of achievement. This is the greatness of the human being. But with frequency, human desires become a condemnation because of the impossibility of answering them. Only if we find who is capable of fulfilling them, we can make possible a real affection to our own nature, to our real self. Thank you very much. <laughs>